take a quick tour of the different elements that will make your website successful on social media. The first thing you'll need is a quick and easy place where you can link out to your social media accounts. I highly recommend that you choose just up to four that will be your most successful social media platforms. For example, for this dairy-free cooking blog, I know that Pinterest is probably going to be the most important social media account. But I also know that I've had lots of success on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram on similar websites I've marketed for. If I click on any of these links, it will link out to my social media account. So let's take a look at Pinterest. You can see it links directly to my homepage on Pinterest. And it has links to all my different posts featured right at the top. This makes it really easy for people to follow and unfollow me if I've impressed them with one of my posts. I also have links out to my favorite social media accounts here in my sidebar. Here, I've opted out of putting my Instagram account, and instead, I have a link so that people can opt into the, my email list so that I can send them updates and new recipes as soon as they come out. Let's see what happens when I click on one of my links. This is my most recent post, shared on August 11th. The first thing you should note is that as I scroll down or up, there's a sticky social media share option that follows you down the page. This also happens when you're on a mobile device. This makes it extremely easy for your audience to know how to share content that they love. The next thing you should note is that I have social proof going on, both in the form of yum likes, which for a recipe blog, that's really helpful. And then I have how many times this recipe has been shared on social media. This isn't a huge number, but when somebody sees that 25 people have already shared this content, they're much more likely to share it in the future. Whereas if they don't know if anybody else has liked it yet, they're not confident that they're going to be able to convince their friends that this is an awesome recipe. You'll note below that I've chosen just five social media platforms as the platforms that I suggest people share my content on. I could choose a lot more, but in social media, there's a concept called choice paralysis. And if you give people too many choices on what they should do next, they just kind of zone out and decide not to share it on anything. So pick up to five of your favorites at the bottom and then just know if a social media platform they love isn't there, for example, Reddit, they will just copy the link and post it into their social media platform of choice. Let's take a look what happens when we click on the Facebook share option. First off, we have this nice, big, beautiful image that shows up here. This is pulled through what's called open graph information, and I'll be showing you how you can add that to your blog. You'll also see that there's a title and the name of my blog, as well as an enticing description that I hope will get people interested in the recipe. You'll also see that the URL of my blog shows up here, and then the author. This is really valuable if I ever decide to have a guest blogger because I can actually have their name show up here and then they can get credit for their amazing recipe they've shared on my blog. If you're missing any of these components, you'll definitely know that this is the tutorial for you because if you're missing any one of these, it drastically decreases the amount that it'll be shared on social media. Let's also take a look at what happens when I click on the tweet option. Okay. 
you can see here that I have a pre-filled out tweet that I suggest they do. People, of course, are welcome to update it however they want, but if I get the ball rolling, they're much more likely to use hashtags that I know are relevant to my audience, and they're gonna give me a shout out by having my Twitter handle right here. I also have StumbleUpon and Yum. These I won't go into right now because they're not as relevant to every blog, but I know for a cooking blog that these are very critical. Now, Pinterest is any blogger's best friend. If you don't already have a Pinterest account, you're going to want to make one. But be sure that you do it the correct way, and I'll outline how you can do that down below. So if I click on the pin option, it won't pull the same image that you see right here. Because if I share a horizontal image on Pinterest, it's not going to do very well. I've actually designed this blog so that it is a bit reminiscent of Pinterest. You see that each recipe has its own big, beautiful vertical image. And this is the image that will pull when people share it on social media. Being able to set which image pulls when you are in different social media accounts is really important. And making sure that an image actually pulls is the hardest part of the social media optimization and will have the most rewards because people are unlikely to click on a link that they don't know how good it's going to be when they get there. But a big, beautiful image will tell people that you know what you're talking about and you're the expert in this field. All right, are you ready to learn all my secrets?